With the public beta of iPadOS 26 right around the corner and me using the developer beta for the better part of a month now, I wanted to talk about iPadOS 26 and kind of highlight all the good things that I love about it and how transformative it's been for the iPad as a whole, but also how it's not all good and I have dealt with a few issues along the way that have been relatively detrimental. And finally, how Apple can kind of tighten everything up to make sure we get the best experience, not only for the public beta, but most importantly for iPadOS 26 when it releases to the entire public come September. So sit back, relax, let's talk all the good, the bad, and the frustrations that I've had with iPadOS 26. But now, a quick word from our sponsor, Paperlike, who continues to support the channel and partner up with us to let us make awesome videos like this one. Let's see what they have to say. I've been using Paperlike products since 2018. Ever since I pulled out my 2018 iPad Pro, within the first few days, I put a Paperlike screen protector on there because I knew that was the best decision to not only protect my display, but also give me the best overall iPad experience the way that was intended to be used. So if you've ever felt like writing or drawing on the iPad was just a tad too slippery because of that glossy display, this completely fixes that. Paperlike is the original paper feel screen protector and it actually feels like writing on real paper. That's thanks to the NanoDot technology, the tiny micro beads that are built into the screen that give you just enough resistance and more control and precision without messing with the screen clarity. This is perfect for creators, students, entrepreneurs, or anyone who's using an iPad to get stuff done. I use it for note taking, sketching, planning, and it just makes the iPad feel complete. And for those of you that are saying that you can now get a nano texture display on your iPad Pro, firstly, you need to get the one terabyte version, which is almost $2,000 and spend an extra $100 on that one. But still, the feel is completely different compared to Paperlike, which actually gives you that resistive feel and not just that anti-glare technology that's on the nano texture display. And then lastly, their customer service is second to none with people responding to you immediately if something goes wrong and they give you a 100 day money back guarantee if for any reason you do want to send it back. So whether you just got your first iPad or you've been an iPad user like myself for years, getting a Paperlike screen protector is always the first thing that I do when getting a new iPad because I know it's going to protect my display, give me a better visual experience because it gets rid of all that glare, and lastly, it actually feels amazing when handwriting on there with the Apple Pencil. But thank you so much for Paperlike for partnering up with 9to5Mac. Now back to iPadOS 26. But now let's get into the good of iPadOS 26. I'm gonna break this down into three main sections. The first one's gonna be that it's just now more computer-like. All the necessary updates that's come to iPadOS 26 has transformed the way that you can view and use visually from a UI perspective, the iPad and how it feels when you are using it. In steps a new windowing system for iPadOS 26, and not only is it for the M-level iPads and the Pro-level iPads, but it's also pretty much for any iPad that can run iPadOS 26, albeit it's gonna be on device itself, not all of them have extended monitor support, but at least this new windowing system that makes it feel like it's a Mac OS version on the iPad is available to a ton more people and a ton more iPads. So just to rattle off some of my favorite features of the new windowing system, of course, you now have the traditional traffic light management buttons, meaning that you have the green, yellow, and red in order to really manage these windows by making them full screen, minimizing them, as well as just Xing out of them and completely quitting the application without having to, again, go into multitasking and swipe away. You have the new tiling system, which again, does include split view. Split view still is a thing here, and if anything is more amplified, people think split view is completely gone, but you can do two apps side by side, and you can still manage them with that little bar in the middle. You can go with three apps next to each other. You can go top to bottom as well with two apps and three apps. And then of course, you can get the quad tiling system to have four apps simultaneously put together. So if you don't want to have four apps in one window, you can definitely do that. And then you have the expose mode, so you can swipe up and have the 12 applications open in one view. And then in beta three, they brought back that swipe with four fingers to be able to manage that. So you can have, you know, maybe your 12 windows open in that multitasking mode, swipe over to the right or left, and then you have a full screen version of something like LumaFusion or Affinity Photo, which I prefer to use in full screen mode because it just gives me a little bit more of a canvas. So it's just easier to manage all these applications. And even when you do have a bunch of windows open at the same time in iPadOS 26, it doesn't feel super cluttered and it doesn't feel kind of daunting. You can still easily manage them, find them if you need to, and of course switch between them very easily. And even some subtle little things, like for example, changing the cursor or the pointer into an actual pointer and not this little circle that kind of emulates your physical touch. So now you can get a little bit more granular, you can get exactly where you need to be by knowing where the pointer is. And even in beta 3, they added that Mac-like feature where if you wiggle your mouse, if you lose where the cursor is on the screen, it'll actually enlarge that mouse. You can see where it is and you're able to find it very quickly. So it's little things like that that really have brought over kind of the best parts of the Mac over to iPad OS and made it still a little bit iPad-y for lack of a better term without like losing the essence of what an iPad is. 
And then that new windowing system has now allowed these applications to run in the background much easier. I posted a picture the other day of me exporting a video in LumaFusion while also uploading a separate video on the YouTube channel. And that was something that was not able to be done before. And if you could do it before, it was a little bit hit or miss. And there was a lot of worrying that maybe the export would cancel and things like that. Now you can have two things running at the same time. And as long as your iPad can handle it from a power perspective, it can be done via a software perspective. So again, everything just got a lot more Mac like in the best way possible without losing the essence of what an iPad is. Now, the second thing that makes it more computer like is going to be the files application. The files application got a complete revamp. It looks visually relatively the same, but you got a lot more of these Mac like features like being able to sort based on your columns, being able to change the size of the columns in order to be able to fit maybe the actual word of the file and things like that. You have the ability to now filter based on a bunch of different things, very similar to the Finder application on Mac OS. You also have the ability to have a better background task manager as well, similar to what I mentioned earlier with the windowing system. So you can have data and files moving around at the same time in different files apps, which is great to see. And then you also have the new folder system where you can bring a folder down to the dock. So the way that I do this is I have my iCloud desktop always pinned on my dock. So wherever I am, I can access all those files, whether my iPhone, my iPad or my Mac. And albeit I could do that before, but now it's just much easier and it's in your face right on my dock. And you can do it in grid view, in fan view. So again, everything just gets a little bit nicer in the files application and a lot more useful. And then finally, you have the new color system and being able to tag different folders, making them different colors, adding emojis. So you can, again, visually see what you're looking for if you have different file types and different file systems. The files application got the revamp that we've all wanted, and it's made it much more productivity focused. And the last thing I want to mention about all the good thing that came with iPadOS 26 is that even though we're adding a bunch of these new features and visually it's changing a little bit and some people need to get used to that, there is this mode where you just turn off windowing mode and your iPad is still your iPad. It's still a touch first interface. It's still a sketch pad with your Apple Pencil or Apple Pencil Pro. You can still use it as the iPad was intended to be used, which was as a pane of glass to be able to read your email, scroll through Safari, a content consumption machine. It's just now nice that we can turn on a mode to go into full multitasking mode and get a little bit more productive and make it feel a lot more Mac like. So again, that's all the good that came to iPadOS 26. I absolutely love it. And again, I think it's brought strides over to the iPad in making it much more of a computer replacement to many more people. So now let's talk about some of the things that are kind of on the bad side and some things that you should note if you are going to install the public beta, because the public beta is still a beta. So it's still install your own risk. And then the developer beta, which again, I installed at my own risk, knowing that something bad could happen to my iPad. I just want to make sure people are a little bit aware of that. So they don't just jump into iPad OS 26 and expect it to all work perfectly, especially in the public beta. So the first glaring issue that I want to bring up is going to be external SSD support. And I'm sure Apple will tighten this up once it comes to the public. But right now it's relatively broken, right? I plug in my external SSD, which is very important to my workflow. And it does get recognized by the iPad, but some of the files are unreadable. The PNGs for some reason don't want to play well with the iPad. Same thing goes with screen recordings. If I screen record something on iPad OS 26 and then want to work with that file, for some reason, it's kind of broken. It just doesn't really work. The file goes grayed out. It doesn't want to export from the video editing platforms that I use. So again, and it doesn't have to do with maybe LumaFusion or the SSD because I plugged it into another computer. I plugged it into another iPad that doesn't have iPad OS 26 and it works totally fine. So screen recording, SSD support, the files themselves sometimes get grayed out, all things that need to get worked on and finalized. My workaround has been to save all my files on device themselves and then it does work. Albeit the screen recording issues still persist, but at least I'm able to work with the files directly on my iPad. But that's annoying because it takes up space and I like to work off of my external SSD to not have much on my iPad, but that is something that they do need to fix. Another thing that people have complained a ton about is slide over missing. I am okay with slide over not being there because it means that I'm getting this new windowing system. If Apple can find a way to bring back slide over, maybe if you do toggle off the windowing mode and you want to go into that normal traditional iPad OS mode, then maybe they can turn on slide over. But a lot of people are annoyed that slide over is no longer there and it's been completely omitted. Another big thing that I've been dealing with is Bluetooth connectivity. So with my AirPods every other day, I needed to kind of reset my iPad, restart my iPhone as well with iOS and iPad OS 26, because even though it was Bluetooth connected and I could go into my control center and find it in my AirPlay and try to press the button to connect to the AirPods, it still would not play the music or the media through the AirPods. It would play the music out loud, even though it recognized that my AirPods were connected and everything in the system was telling me like, hey, they are connected. It told me the battery life. I can go into my AirPods settings. 
it just wouldn't play into my AirPods. And again, that's an issue with iOS and iPadOS, not the AirPods themselves. So once you do the soft reset, it does work after the soft reset or turning it off and on, but it's just something that I don't want to deal with, which I'm hoping they tighten up. And then I want to bring one more thing to light when it does come to the windowing mode and the multitasking. And I think it has to do with the fact that the aspect ratio on the iPad is a little bit iffy compared to a traditional laptop. So the windowing mode is great and it's easy to manage, but something about it still feels a little tight, even on my 13 inch version of the iPad Pro. If I'm using the windowing mode or if I'm using just regular floating windows on my 13 inch MacBook Air, it doesn't feel as cluttered as it does on the iPad itself. And I think that's because the iPad is a taller versus wider kind of ratio when it comes to the aspect ratio. And I think this has to do with form factor and getting used to it, but something about it still feels a little bit too tight, like it's lacking room to be able to multitask with multiple windows overlapping each other. But that could just be me. Let me know in the comment down below if you kind of experience the same thing, even on the larger iPads, like the 13 inch iPad Air and iPad Pro. But now what can Apple do to kind of alleviate this? They can kind of reinvent or reintroduce slide over. I'm sure it would be very easy for them to do that. For example, if you do just turn off the windowing mode, you can go back to like traditional mode on the iPad for multitasking. You can get your normal version of split view and you can also get your slide over back if that's what you want to do. I mean, you know, allow people to have that instance if they want it. They definitely need to fix the external drive support in order for me to be able to use it because that is a very big part of my workflow and it's been very detrimental in terms of how I edit everything, how I manage my space internally. And then also when I am in a time crunch and I'm trying to get these beta videos out, it adds pretty much two times the amount of time that I would to edit and export these videos. And then another thing that I wanted to bring up that they could improve is going to be with this liquid glass, right? I didn't really put this in the good or the bad because this is mostly subjective. Liquid glass is just a look and a kind of UI that's been changed to make it feel a little bit fresher. And we've noticed that from beta one to beta three, liquid glass has actually been toned down a lot. I for one enjoyed the first version of liquid glass. I thought it was very cool. It felt like it was a premium experience on a software side, which is something that I've never really experienced before. So what I think Apple should do is bring over a toggle or a slider to allow us to decide how much liquid glassiness, for lack of a better term, we want in our operating system. I think that would alleviate a lot of issues. If you want liquid glass completely gone and make it kind of more opaque, by all means, slide that slider all the way to the right. And if you want it to be completely transparent, slide it all the way to the left. And then that way you can determine if you have readability issues on your own based on your slider and how much transparency you want to have. So I think similarly to how they have the different modes when it comes to normal, then stage manager, and then the new windowing mode when it comes to multitasking, I think Apple should just have maybe a toggle in the control center to toggle pro mode or iPad mode or Mac mode or Mac OS light mode to kind of give the people best of both worlds because clearly it can run both of them since they're kind of running in conjunction with each other right now. I think that's something Apple should consider. But that's everything that you need to know about iPadOS 26, at least from a high level, in terms of whether or not you should install the public beta on your main device. I've dealt with more issues than I've ever dealt with on a beta program. Again, it's the most amount of change, both visually and functionally, so I was ready for all these issues to arise, and it's always install at your own risk. Because when you are signing up for a beta, you're signing up to be a tester, and things will be broken, and they will be fixed based on feedback, and as time goes on, as Apple has been doing, so do let me know in the comment down below what you think. Are you going to install the public beta on your main device? Are you going to install iOS, iPadOS? I for one think iPadOS 26 is going to be amazing moving forward for the iPad and how people view the iPad and how people actually use the iPad moving forward as a tablet, as a computer. And it is the most versatile device on the market in my opinion. But let me know with a comment down below what you finally think and what you're going to do. Always curious to have that discussion down below. But if you made it to this end of this long video, Thank you, and leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these right here. And big shout out to Paperlike for continuing to support the channel. Peace.